everybody and welcome to Soft Stretchy and Synthetic. I'm Courtney Kibitz and today we're going to talk all about new apparel fabrics and how we can heat print them successfully with our heat presses. So if this is your first time joining us for our Stalls TV class, I want to go ahead and point out a couple of things. Most importantly is the questions box. So as I'm printing things or as I'm saying things, if you have a question that comes up, feel free to chat that in over there. Um, Karen's helping us out throughout the class today, so she'll be there to facilitate questions and um, ask them to me to go ahead and answer on screen as they come up as well. So just wanted to point that out. Um, and then with the live classes, this will basically be a whole lot of demo today because like I said, I want to show you guys how to print these fabrics successfully. So if you've been looking at the apparel market lately, you've probably noticed the athleisure trend that's really expanded and exploded is probably a better word for it. Um, we're starting to see not only performance wear in um, school apparel and athletic apparel, but we're starting to see more performance wear into corporate apparel or into everyday apparel that people are wearing everywhere. Um, I saw a video once where they were making a joke about active wear and how people are wearing it everywhere. They're wearing it to shop, they're wearing it to the grocery store, they're wearing it to take their um, kids to school. And so that's kind of the world that we're living in. No matter what we're decorating for people, these fabrics are comfortable, they're what people want to wear, and so we have to find a way to decorate them successfully. On the flip side of performance wear, of course, which adds a whole range of um, different challenges itself, we're starting to see um, even more fabric. So, of course, we'll show you the basic performance wear, the 100% moisture wicking poly garments and how to print those. We're going to look at hybrid garments, so garments that mix together polyester and spandex and lycra. And when I talk a lot about synthetic materials, we're looking more at those fabrics that have polyester, lycra, spandex, rayon basically those materials that aren't cotton, um, so which cause a little bit more challenges to decorate. So this one that we'll be decorating is more of a lycra spandex stretchy mix. So there's some challenges to decorating both of these types of fabrics. And then recently, mostly in 2016, one garment that's came onto the marketplace that are seeing a lot of decorators have challenges printing are tri-blends. So a tri-blend is a tricky garment, mainly because it looks exactly like a cotton t-shirt. So to the human eye, it really just looks like a basic 100% cotton fabric until you take it over to the heat press. And these garments actually have a mixture, as you look at the tags, of um, cotton, polyester, and rayon. And the content mix for those three materials, um, they will vary. Basically, they have these three fabrics so they can get that soft, lightweight feel and that nice drape that you get from tri-blends. That's why they're so popular. Um, they're by far one of the best for um, any blank apparel supplier, and for you that are decorators, you know that they're selling well as, as well as they're in the retail stores and your customers want them too. So we're going to look and talk about how to print them successfully as well. To start, we'll start with the basics of performance wear, so printing this 100% polyester moisture wicking fabrics. Now before I go over to the heat press, I do want to mention that the one thing to keep in mind and the one key to printing all of these fabrics I'm going to show you today successfully is the heat transfer that you choose. And all of the heat transfers I'm going to show you are going to be a low temperature adhesive. The basic secret or the key to printing all of these is basically just to cool your heat press down. And I'm not saying take your heat press and cool it down and keep using your same transfers. Of course, you want to look for a transfer that is designed to apply at a lower temperature. That avoids scorching on any of these synthetic fabrics, which is traditionally the difficulty that you difficulty that we see. They're all very heat sensitive. And so 360, 330, even 320. All of those temperatures can scorch them, so we're going to look at low temperature solutions that basically allow you to print all of these fabric types for any color, any logo, any quantity, and so we'll walk through those with you as well. So I'm going to start with the basics um, with CAD cut design, and I'm going to be decorating 100% polyester garment with CAD cut Premium Plus. Now you'll see CAD cut Premium Plus come back later when we print a tri-blend, so the same product can transition across basically any synthetic material, polys, lycra spandex, cotton. Um, tri-blend blends and all of that. So we'll head over to the heat press and talk a little bit about uh, Premium Plus. Get a zoomed out angle there so you guys can see me a little bit with the press. So I'm just using the Hotronics Fusion heat press and I have it powered up to 280 degrees for this application. Now I'm going to load on my 100% polyester garment to get it ready for the application. Whenever you're decorating with low temperature heat transfers, one tip I like before I get started, now this heat press has been heated up for quite a while today, but if you just came in in the morning and you're getting ready to print some of these garments with a lower temperature transfer, I like to warm that bottom platen up a little bit. So I just lock my heat press down 10, 15 seconds, 
and really start to warm up that bottom platen. And that's going to allow my bottom platen to kind of warm up from being cold overnight or, you know, from being maybe sitting throughout the day or something if you're heat printing at night. And um, really allow the adhesive for these low temperature transfer heat from the side, which really help to give that durable print. So that's a tip I like. Of course, if you're on your 15th or 20th chart, your press is probably pretty hot already, so you don't need to worry about the preheat. I am going to load my garment on the correct direction, so the front of the shirt. When printing 100% polyester garments, I always recommend preheating the garment as well. Reason for that is polyester and synthetic fabrics like this tend to hold a lot of moisture. So that's where you're going to traditionally see a lot of steam coming up and you want to make sure to get all that moisture out of these synthetic fabrics before your application. Once I have that set, I'm going to go ahead and line up my transfer here. Give you guys an over the head, over the press, I should say, camera angle, maybe. This never works for me. <laughs> we'll go ahead and go without it for now. All right, press this down. Now for Cat Cut Premium Press, it's 280 degrees, 8 to 10 seconds. I'm going to lock that down also at a medium pressure, so keep in mind a um, low dwell or a Lower application is ideal for these types of settings. So we had a low dwell, a low pressure. Premium Plus is a warm peel, so I give it a couple of seconds, usually about three to five, before I peel back the uh, carrier. There you go. Premium Plus has a little bit more of an aggressive uh, carrier to it. So when you're printing performance fabrics, especially as you start to move to uh, like spandex mixes and different fabrics like that. I always like to tell customers, be careful not to uh, do the grip and rip whenever you're printing these fabrics because what's going to happen is you're going to uh, distort the image a little bit so you won't be able to really work that. And So I'm going to go ahead and give it a quick tug. You'll see not only is it soft, lightweight, has that low temperature adhesive for a, for a performance garment, but it also has the stretch and rebound that you want. I'm going to get a close-up shot here and take this up to um, one of my other angles here, get a nice over the head shot with a floor. And you guys can kind of see how this product really um, works. So it's got that nice, soft, lightweight feel, has a lot of stretch and rebound, and has a nice finish on the garment. So this is Cat Cut Premium Plus. You're going to cut it on your vinyl cutter and get that nice, soft, lightweight feel. So that works perfect for those applications. I'm going to head back over to the Fusion Heat Press and grab my next garment and design while you guys are taking a look at that one there. And then for my next design, so we're going to look at those jobs that you have whenever you have those um, orders that are, let's say, not custom. So, or maybe you just have so many of them you want to get them done quicker, or you want to screen print and finish. So if you like screen printed transfers, you like the, the simplicity of being able to maybe order them or use them at your shop, there are low temperature solutions for when you're using screen printed transfers as well. The same principles apply. I need a transfer that applies at a lower temperature soft, lightweight, all of those nice things that we love about performance wear. And so this transfer I'm going to be applying is actually a two-color transfer from Transfer Express, and it's called ElastiPrints. Ideally, what it has is it's going to have a, that low temperature adhesive and give me everything I want for this application. So for this, I've just got a long sleeve performance shirt. Um, you'll notice a lot of the garments that I'm decorating here had that heathered finish to them. The blue one had it, this gray has it, and a few other ones. That's something you want to take note of if you haven't noticed all the apparel manufacturers really are moving towards this um, heathered fabric, and that's just another apparel trend. doesn't make it more difficult to decorate, but that usually means it's got some kind of um, other fabric into it, whether it's a cotton poly mix or it has some rayon. All of those things work together when they've got that heathered finish. So I've loaded my garment, preheated it just like I did for Premium Plus. I'm going to line up my Elasti Prince transfer and apply it for its recommended application, which is 275 degrees for 15 seconds. I'm just going to make that adjustment on my um, heat press there, lock it down, give us another shot since you guys saw it last time. There we go. It does work. Every now and then you get a little lucky. All right, so that's 15 seconds, 275 degrees. Now, Elastic Print is a cold peel, so ideally what I would do is that if I was doing a large amount of these um, shirts, I would just set them all aside, print all 50, 100, 200 of them, 
and come back and peel them later. And that's really the benefit of using a screen printer transfer is being able to do that 150, that 200 pieces, even 50, especially if you're doing single color designs. I have a lot of decorators that love Premium Plus and have used it for a number of years on their performance or fabrics, just like I showed you guys here. But what we found is once they get past 50 or 100 pieces, sometimes weeding doesn't make sense. Or sometimes as you see this really fine detail, this would be really challenging to get with a CAD cut material. So as you get more detailed or uh, you know larger quantities, I really recommend moving towards a screen print and transfer like this. You've got that soft feel to it. Um, it's got that same low temperature that avoids any scorching on these fabrics or tribe lines, which we'll look at a little bit later in the class with this product. So that was Elasti Prints from Transfer Express. I'm going to go ahead and take this off, and I'm going to switch out. Or I'm going to switch to a nether transfer type. So if you're playing along at home, so far we've looked at a transfer for um, lower quantities for single color designs. Now with CAD cut materials like Premium Plus on that blue shirt, I recommend somewhere between one and three colors. Anything over three colors, you really want to move more to a digital print like you see here. Um, and even sometimes at three colors, that makes more sense. And that's where we're starting to see products like digital transfers. And so just like with CACIT materials, just like with screen printed transfers, there are digital transfers that are recommended for applying at a lower temperature. That helps you to get that full color logo um, and any order size basically on these synthetic performance fabrics. And the one I'm specifically decorating is 100% polyester moisture wicking um, fabric and it's got a little bit of a heathered finish to it. You guys can kind of see that on the screen. Um, it's a really nice look from Sanmar. And the material I'm using, um, I prefer for dark performance fabrics unless they're in the posi charge line at Sanmar. The posi charge line at Sanmar are nice because they can guarantee that the dyes and 100% polyester fabric aren't going to bleed. And that's another challenge that we see in a lot of these synthetic fabrics and these performance wear garments is dye migration. And so if you have a garment that doesn't have that posi charge feature from Sanmar, then you're going to want to choose a transfer that not only applies at a lower temperature, but has an adhesive that's going to guarantee it'll block the dyes from coming through. So different from some other transfers that I'm going to be pressing that have maybe a white or a gray backing to them, kind of like you're seeing here that I'll press later, this one has a charcoal backing or almost a black backing. And what that charcoal based adhesive does is it's going to allow the dyes to not come through. It'll block the dyes from coming through if your garment is indeed um, unstable or there's going to be dyes in it. So like I said, if you're going to a dark 100% polyester and it's not from the posi charge line of Sanmar, you may want to consider paying a little extra for getting that dye blocking adhesive because it is a challenge that we can't, you can never guarantee, I can't guarantee um, whether or not it's going to bleed or not, the fabric's changing depending on where the, uh, the bulk fabric comes from into the manufacturers, and so it's always better to be safe than sorry. Um, I'm going to cover this up, so the product I'm applying with that charcoal backing is called Supertech Sublistop. Now it applies at 280 degrees for two applications of five seconds, so I'm going to turn my applications down to two five second hits. The Hotronics Fusion I'm using, if you haven't seen this press, actually has dual timers. So when I have a multiple application, whether it's a preheat and an application or just two applications like I have here, I like to set both of the timers so I don't have to worry about changing them throughout the application. Okay, so one five second application and I'm going to peel the carrier back. Again, just like with Premium Plus, the carrier is a little bit sticky for all of the Stahl's Tech products that I'll be applying, so just like Super Tech Sublistop I have here. So you don't want to grip and rip, especially on a high stretch fabric like a Lycra spandex. That can cause the transfer to stretch a little bit and maybe distort your image. So be cautious whenever you're peeling the carrier on these types of fabrics. Now I'm going to cover it up since I have the material now exposed and reheat it for an additional five seconds because the uh, sublistop product does need a full second for the application. Peel that cover sheet back, and then we'll let it cool down a little bit before it stretches, but although this is 100% poly fabric, it doesn't have a ton of stretch, it's more lightweight. This product, although it's a, a dye blocking product with a, a stronger adhesive, it does have a, still a soft lightweight feel. It's got a lot of stretch to it, so you can see as I'm tugging it and laying it back down, it's not distorting the image, it's moving with the wearer. So if you're starting to decorate any type of compression fabrics, 
for schools, leagues, or any of these really nice Lycra spandex zip-ups that are even in the corporate world, you want to look at a product that has the stretch like this in the Stahl's tech line. So those are some things to consider. I'm going to remove this and I'm going to actually be printing that metallic finish. So when it comes to printing synthetic fabrics, one trend that we see not only in these types of fabrics, which again you're seeing the heathering and the color blocking with some of the um, charcoal coloring down the striping, but another big trend that we're seeing is with metallic finishes. So taking a full color logo, taking a single color logo, and making it pop with a little bit of shimmer, shine, and metallic, and we're getting that with the foil version of the tech product. So now we have a transfer that is low temperature. So it's going to give us what we want when it comes to not scorching these synthetic fabrics. It's going to have the stretch and the soft feel that we want, and it's got that metallic finish. So this is the metallic white color, um, but there's also a silver and a gold, and so it changes depending on what color you're using. And when I go to print a zip-up jacket like this, or any item, you'll notice that even the t-shirts I've printed, I made sure to pull all of the seams off. So the collars are always off, the shoulder seams are always off, and that's really important when you're decorating these heat-sensitive synthetic fabrics, because those raised areas are more likely to scorch. So even if the garment doesn't scorch itself under a lower heat, um, you're going to start to see higher pressure areas, like a higher raised seam, also get a little bit of pressure. So even if it's away from the transfer that it's not going to cause an um, inaccurate application, you want to try to get those seams off as much as possible. So I'm going to actually use a heat printing accessory called a interchangeable platen on my fusion heat press. So I'm going to just grab the gold knob underneath the press and lift out my platen. So you're going to notice that the fusion heat press has a pin registration. So there's just a pin on the bottom of my 16 by 20 platen, which gives me the ability to drop in a smaller 6x10 size into that pin registration hole. So it's a quick, fast and easy change. And now when I want to go to print a zip-up synthetic fabric like this, I can actually load the garment right onto the plat. And so now all those seams from the shoulders, from the um, collar of the shirt, all of that's fallen off, including the zipper. That's important as well because, of course, that zipper, I believe, was plastic, so it could melt under the high heat of the heat press. Now, before I press things on a 6x10, one thing to keep in mind is I mentioned earlier that low pressure is important. Lower pressure. Whenever you change to a 6x10 platen onto your 16x20 heat press, you want to double check the pressure of your machine, which is what I'm doing here by adjusting the over the center pressure adjustment knob. When you move to a small mass, small 6x10 platen and you're putting that large 16x20 mass on top of it, it's important to know that a, if your heat press like the Fusion reads out a medium pressure, which is traditionally somewhere between a four and six, really more of a three or two or three is a medium pressure on this small platen because you're pushing a whole lot of mass in this one small area. So feel free to dial back your pressure a little bit to, to avoid any type of markings or scorching because you're still going to get an accurate durable pressure whenever you're at that um, pressure for the heat press. So I've dialed in my pressure there pretty good for that small platen. I'm going to line up my foil tech transfer. And anytime I use the tech products, you're noticing I'm using a cover sheet. Really good for making sure you're holding down that transfer because the carrier sheet is very, very thin, so it can actually curl a little bit and cause the transfer to stick to the top of the heater, which we don't want. So just like with SuperTech Level Stop, Foil Tech is in the same product category, so it uses the same application. It's a five second application. And then I'll peel back that carrier again with that same soft movement, just like I did for the um, Subless Stop. Recover it with my cover sheet. And then seal it for the final application. So I'll give you guys a few seconds to take a look at that. You can kind of see the metallic shine picking up on that blue and gold. And I want to kind of recap the products and talk a little bit about them. So these were digital transfers. Um, two options. This was a foil tech and a sub stop. There's also another single color option that's called super tech opaque. But I'll be pressing later when we talk about some really difficult situations. Um, all of them apply at that same low temperature application. And they have different 
purposes. One's for your basic matte finish, the other one gives you the dye blocking adhesive, and then this one gives you the metallic, which comes in silver, white, and gold. Now keep in mind, when you're using a product like this, you have a couple of options. If you own a solvent printer, you could actually print all of these in-house and create these full color logos yourself. If not, this is a digital transfer that you would be ordering specifically um, with your full color logo, and it's really just ideal for those full color situations. Now you're going to notice my Vision Clear logo here. Um, if you look very closely, there's actually a small black outline that's around this gold image. And that's just one of the natures of this product, and when you start to move to a, a digital transfer or a full color transfer, and you need something that's going to give you that full color or that gradient pop that you're getting from this, but maybe you want finer detail, which isn't able to be done with this application just because of the, the product that we're printing on, the, the vinyl material. And so we're going to look at a different transfer type that's called stretch litho um, that's going to allow you to get that fine detail and a low temperature adhesive on these performance fabrics. And so before I move on to that, um, I want to double check and make sure there's no questions that we haven't had come in on the first few applications or decorating these fabrics. Karen, have I got any questions? We do have a question. What would be considered medium pressure when using an older air Hotronics heat press? For the older hair, uh, any of the air presses really for Hotronics, you're looking um, in a PSI, so a medium PSI, you'd look, be looking between 40 and 60 PSI basically for the medium pressures. Good, looks like I don't have any other questions there, so I'm going to grab my next sample with the stretch litho, and we can talk about this product a little bit. So again, I'm moving to those fabrics that are very um, fashionable, they have that little bit of a compressionness to them, some stretch and rebound. These are the types of things you're going to be decorating and selling to uh, not only you're going to be selling them to corporate clients, and I really think that's where a lot of these garments are starting to transcend, is in that, like I said, that active wear, that athleisure that we're starting to see in all markets. So I'm going to take off the uh, zip up that I just decorated and set that aside. And same principles apply as they did with the other products, or the other jacket that I had applied. I'm just going to load this onto that 6x10 platen and try to get it as flat as possible, removing any of the seams. Preheat it a little bit to get some of the moisture and wrinkles. And then I'm going to switch back to my overhead camera while I grab my transfer so you guys can see how this applies in the application. Seem to have mislocated my small design, which isn't surprising because I'm a little, my office is a little messy. Here we go. All right. So these transfers you guys are seeing up here on the screen are actually what we call the stretch litho. So different from the other transfers that we've seen, this is kind of a hybrid transfer that really mixes screen printed transfers with digital transfers. And so you're getting the benefit of the digital transfer and all of the full color logos like you see here in this World Games image. But on the flip side, um, we're also getting that very fine detail, and you'll see that in the Los Angeles 2015. And so if you're looking at this on the screen, it probably doesn't look like too fine of detail in the way that the transfer is going to um, look on the paper, but I want to show you kind of what I call the magic of how this appears and how it works. So the first application, as I lay this transfer out for a full 11 seconds, at 275 degrees, and so I'm at 280, so we're going to go ahead and run it as is, but you want to be at 275. And medium to firm pressure for the pressure setting on this. Now once that 11 seconds is done, I do want to cool these down. So like I said, if you're in a production run, one thing I really recommend is um, setting, you know, doing all your first application, setting these aside, and then you'll go back and do the second application, because there's a second hit that's where the magic that I call happens with this transfer. And so, what comes with these transfers when you order them is they actually can be ordered in 11 and a quarter by 14 inch sheets. So just like with screen printed transfers that you saw earlier, you're kind of um, not limited to how many logos you can place on that 11 by 14 sheet. As long as it fits, it goes. So it can be any color count, it can be any finish, and you have that ability with the stretch litho transfer. So I could gang up 
the um, special World Games design with maybe a tree line outdoor logo and then just trim them all apart at the heat press once I get there. Now with those transfers also comes a special cover sheet that's going to be needed for the second application. And so if you ganged up your designs like I've done, you're going to want to trim that to fit so you can save all the paper, extra paper for your extra designs. I'm going to set those aside. And this looks like it's cooled down to the touch while I've been talking. So I'm going to peel the carrier back. Now take a look on the screen and look really small at that last line where it says Los Angeles uh, 2015. My transfer's a little outdated. Um, but you'll notice that there's some ink that's left on the paper. That's fine. That's part of the registration process. And then you're also noticing all of this crazy detail that's in here. This paper, when I lay it up over top of it, is going to remove um, that extra ink and really clean up the lines. And that's where you're getting that really crisp, clean, free-floating text and lines. This applies at five seconds at that same 275 degrees. I'm going to remove my carrier there. And then you'll see how it pulled off all that, extra all that extra ink that I didn't want that was making it kind of blurry and difficult to see. And now you're really able to see even the trademark um, that's very, very fine detail on there. All of that has now cleaned up all of the detail inside the World Games logo. So this is a really phenomenal example of things I couldn't have done with CAD prints but are now possible with Stretch Litho. And so it really opens me up to any logo, any detail, any color count, all of that on a lightweight and soft material. And so I'll switch back to the main camera. And then, Karen, do I have any questions while I'm getting ready to show this on the screen? We do have a question. Okay. Can you use Stretch Litho on regular cotton t-shirts? Yes. Stretch Litho, the same product applies. It looks really great here on this uh, quarter zip shirt. Um, but it applies 100% cotton, cotton poly. So even if you have these types of logos and you're looking for them for regular t-shirt application, it works along with the stretch and performance where the same application applies. No questions? OK. Awesome. So I'm going to set this aside there. That was the stretch litho. And so that's a transfer that would have to be ordered from Transfer Express. So there's not a machine that you could purchase to do this like you could with a solvent printer or a vinyl cutter for the other applications I've shown you guys here so far today. So that takes a look at some of those synthetic performance wear fabrics. They've kind of been out in the market for a while, but they're just growing in the availability and the demand from customers. And so it's important to understand how to decorate them. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about that new fabric and the tri-blend and some of the challenges that we see there. Now, this tri-blend specifically, I mentioned earlier, they have a mixture of cotton, polyester, and rayon. So that content and the amount of each type of changes depending on the tri-blend that you're ordering. So a tri-blend from Sanmar is going to be different from a tri-blend from Next Level Apparel. It's different from a tri-blend from Box and Craft. And all of them have their different components. This one specifically is made up of... 50% uh, polyester, 38% cotton, and 12% rayon. And so with this fabric, um, the, less, the lesser amount of rayon, the less like it, likely it's going to be to scorch under a higher heat. So if it has a lower rayon, you may be able to get away with even a higher heat transfer. But anytime you look at a tri-blend, I really like to just be safe and use a low temperature adhesive because that the same principles apply. Rayon is heat sensitive, polyester is heat sensitive, and so when you mix a 50% content of both of those two together, you're going to have a heat sensitive garment, especially if the seams and items are on the press. So I'm going to put back in my 16 by 20 platen, just changing out my 6 by 10 the same way I did for the first application. Grab the 16 by 20. Slide my heat press out of the way. You'll feel that click back in so you can just lock it back in place. And then I'm going to load on my tri-blend t-shirt. There we go. All right, so I've loaded my t-shirt. It's all set and ready to go. You'll notice same principles apply. I loaded it on, got it straight by using my platen as kind of my center guide, and then I always pull off all of those seams. So I'm getting a nice flat print area because if not, those raised areas can cause some inaccurate pressure and have some issues with the um, pressure. Switch over. Oh, I tried to switch over to the overhead. Looks like it was giving me a little bit of feedback, so I'm going to leave it. You guys can look at me instead. 
So I'm going to preheat this. Now I changed my platen back over, so I do need to adjust my pressure using that over the center pressure adjustment knob, making sure I'm getting the accurate application I want. And then I need to find my transfer. And so this transfer that I've applied is that same Elasti print screen printed ink transfer that I'd ordered from Transfer Express. One key to notice that I'd pointed out a little bit about stretch litho as well is the benefit of gang sheeting when you're ordering these style of transfers. So I've actually ganged together, I've gotten pretty creative. I've got five of them on here. So that helps to cut my cost. And when you're ordering transfer from Transfer Express, either using the Easy Viewer or their customer service team can help you to make sure you're ganging them correctly and cutting costs and saving money. That way I like to get really creative and put extra designs for other customers, just shrink down logos so I can put them on bags or left chest logos. I mean, I'll, I'm pretty frugal, so I'll save money anywhere I possibly can when it comes to transfers. So I've trimmed them apart. I'm just going to line them up over here at the heat press. And I'm going to apply this down for that same application we used earlier for Transfer Express's Elasti Prints. So same product I used in Performance where it works on both applications because they're both heat sensitive. They need a transfer that's going to help to combat that and be low temperature. Do you have any questions, Karen, while we're waiting on this to finish curing? We have a few questions. Okay, awesome. Um, is there a way to do glitter flake at a low temperature? That is a great question. So while that's cooling down, I'll address it. Um, is glitter flake able to be applied at a lower temperature? Glitter flake can apply at 300 degrees for an application to where it's 300 degrees, um, which will help to eliminate some of the scorch marks you see at 320, but it would be 300, 10 seconds um, at a medium pressure, so about 60 to 70 PSI, or a medium five or six or seven on your Hotronics heat press. And then um, you would peel the carrier back hot, cover and seconds, and that gives you the extra heat that you need to ensure a durable application at 300 degrees. So 300, 10, peel the carrier, five seconds more, and you're good to go. Okay, and can you use fashion film on rayon, rayon blend shirts if you press at a lower temperature for a longer time? With fashion film, um, to my knowledge, there's not a way to lower the application from 320 degrees to um, 300 or 300 degrees. So I would still leave it at 320. You likely will have success printing it if the rayon count's not real high, like a 12% at, at, at 320 degrees. But I would recommend switching to something more like the Premium Plus if you're worried about it scorching. Um, I'll give you guys a little tip when it comes to printing any type of performance fabric tri blends when you're sourcing your garments. Um, you can have a little leeway if you're printing a light color. So a light colored tri blend or a light colored performance fabric is less likely to scorch as much as a black. And so um, you could get away with fashion film or glitter flag or those higher temperature materials sometimes with a white fabric. Um, so it's one way to, to be able to still use your same material and get the job done. All right, looks like I got all the questions so far. So I'm going to peel this back slightly cool down enough, so I'll peel that paper for the screen printed transfer and set it aside. Now we still have that same nice, soft, lightweight finish. Again, that low temperature helps to avoid any scorching, kept the seams and everybody off, so we're all set and ready to go. I was even able to get some pretty fine detail with that screen printed transfer, and that's really the benefit of this print process that we saw earlier as well. Just like with the performance wear, if you're looking to be more personalized or more one-offs customization on tri blends or performance wear, because we all know that everybody wants to be unique and they want their own logo, their own design, or they are a small business and maybe only need six or 12 shirts and they don't need 100, and so you need to find ways to compete with those jobs. And that's where those CAD cut materials like Premium Plus really fit in. So you don't have to be afraid that you can't personalize these types of fabrics with a CAD cut heat transfer material for a vinyl cutter. So I'm going to load, see if this t-shirt will load on without changing my platen. It's a small ladies garment. I'm seeing a little bit of stretch here, so I am going to switch out my platen. You'll notice whenever I apply tri blend performance or any type of garment, one thing about changing to a smaller ladies garment is that you want to be careful not to stretch the garment on the platen like I was going to with the 16 by 20 because that could distort your image. And so I'm going to actually take off the 16 by 20 and I'm going to drop in an 11 by 15. 
Anytime you do that, double check and make sure your artwork's going to fit. If not, this platen could rotate so I could accommodate it at the smaller size. 11 by 15 to me is kind of the ideal size for ladies' garments and different applications like that. So now when I go to load this on, I've got more room. I don't have to worry about the shoulder seams being up on here because I can easily slide them off where I wouldn't have been able to on the 16 by 20. And I'm not stretching the shirt that's going to cause any issues with the transfer um, stretching itself. And so I'll preheat this to remove any moisture and wrinkles. And anytime you change the platen, it's always good to double check your pressure for the change in density from one platen to another. Make sure you're not over applying because that's one common challenge we see a lot with performance wear and with tri blends. And all synthetic fabric is just over application, over heat, over pressure, over time. All of those things can cause challenges with scorch marks and not giving you a completely quality finish. Line up my waterfront spa design. Apply this for that same application for CAD Cut Premium Plus. So if you're playing along at home, that was 8 to 10 seconds at 280 degrees and a medium pressure. Then it's going to be a warm peel, so I'll give it a few seconds to cool down before I peel that carrier back. If you guys have questions, feel free to chat them in now. So for me, a warm peel is about 3 to 5 seconds. I kind of, you know, give it a couple shakes and then let it go. Maybe a few more shakes. Really, really cold here. Really hot. So again, like I mentioned with Premium Plus, you want to be careful not to do what I call the rip and grip when you're peeling the carriers back that could cause any issues. Starting to see a little bit of lifting here. I maybe started to pull it a little too early and then let it cool completely. If you ever notice any lifting on any of your transfers, one thing you can do is cover it back up, either put a cover sheet over it or leave the carrier there, and reseal it so you make sure it's getting that full application. Karen, looks like I have a question coming in. Can you lay the whole shirt on top of the platen if you only have one platen on your heat press instead of threading the shirt onto the platen? Yes, so you could lay the shirt on top of the platen if you didn't have a threadable heat press like I'm using here. Like I said, you just want to be careful not to have some of the seams in the way, especially on performance fabrics in darker colors. You're going to notice a shining area where the seams are getting into the way. So if you can avoid and kind of drape the collar and the seams from the shoulder off, and that would be more ideal, um, ensuring that you're getting a flat application finish. All right, looks like we're all stuck good there. So I just needed to reseal that to heat back the adhesive since I peeled it a little too early. And we've got a nice, completely finished, decorated shirt for, this would be for a resort and spa, so maybe they just wanted a couple of shirts for their um, spa staff, and it's maybe a smaller location, this would work ideal and perfect for that application. Doesn't look like I have too many other questions, so I want to talk a little bit as I grab my next item about those difficult scenarios, because so far today, um, everything I've pressed has worked perfectly, and all of the applications have been 100%, but in any occasion, I want to be as transparent as possible, and I want you guys to understand how to compete with those issues when we come across a garment that we know is going to scorch and even the low temperature adhesive doesn't work, what do I do in those types of situations? And um, ideally, what I have found to be a true finish or a true thing that really works is to use a, is to try to isolate the scorch mark as much as possible. It's not ideal, but if you run into those issues where you're noticing um, that the finish or the area is leaving still that scorch mark at 280 degrees, what you're going to want to do is shrink so let's say I have this um, polyester shirt here from OGO that I'm, I decorated with a left chest logo. If I notice that it's scorching on the entire fabric, what I would do is I would cut um, a print perfect pad. And so I've cut, dropped this one up pretty good. But you would take what's called a print perfect pad. looks kind of like a thicker mouse pad, very similar to what's on the top of your heat press flattens. And you would trim it down to the size that you want it to be for your logo. And so what that would do is it would allow you to take your garment, load it onto your platen at that 280 degrees, and then size up your transfer to fit it perfectly, which is what I've done. I've actually gotten a little too close, so you want to make sure to give yourself a little leeway over top of the print perfect pad. I've actually gotten pretty, pretty close, but I'm going to go ahead and roll with it anyways. 
And that's just going to raise that print area up so the only part that scorches is where my transfer is and not where my, not my entire garment, since the rest of the garment is actually falling below this. I'm going to give the overhead one more shot and see what I can get for us. So you guys can see as I line up the transfer. There we go. So what I've done here is I've loaded that Print Perfect pad onto the platen, onto my shirt, kind of where I want the transfer to be, so trying to be as straight and in place as possible. And then I'm going to line up my CAD Prince transfer with that. And like I said, I've gotten pretty close, so you do want to give yourself enough leeway so that this, this process is easier for you. But if it wasn't hard, then you guys would think I can do it with ease and that I'm a true professional. So I'm going to size that up. This is a stall stack product, so this is another one of those digital transfers. Um, this is just a standard opaque, so it gives you that matte finish. I'm going to cover it, hope I got everything where it needs to go. And then I'm going to actually adjust my pressure because I added that density of the thick pad. Change my application two applications for five seconds for all of the stalls products. I'm setting both timers for five seconds. Put my stylus back. And then I'm going to lock that down for that full five second application. Now when I go and peel this back, I'll notice if I didn't get enough pressure. Oh, looks like I got everybody in place. Perfect. See, lining that up was easier than you guys thought, even if uh, I cut that pad a little too close. So another application of five seconds with that Print Perfect pad just to get the full application needed for the tech product. And I've got a full finish there. And so what that's done, like I had mentioned, is you'll notice you're seeing the scorch mark. So it is going to leave a little scorch mark, but it's going to be isolated around the design. And that's kind of the ideal of being able to use a Print Perfect pad um, versus this. And I use scissors, of course, you can get a much more accurate cut if you line the transfer up with maybe an X-Acto knife and getting that really clean edge for all of those transfers. So on the flip side, if I would have pressed, oh, if I would have pressed this and knocked my, heat, my camera down, without it, I would have gotten a lot of different scorch marks all throughout the entire transfers and the design. So keep in mind that's a good tool to have on hand is to keep those print perfect pads they sell them in a variety of sizes. They sell them in like a 6x20, that one was a 3x5, and I think there's an 8x10. So you could keep those on hand for those really hard to decorate items, like when you get into a polo shirt or a left chest of a zip-up jacket, just like I did there. Um, that's really another tool that I use on the application. So Karen, do I have another question coming in? Yes. Could you go over the general rule of thumb for using a cover sheet? General rule of thumb of cover sheets are kind of like the general rule of thumb for seat belts. You should always wear them and you should always use your cover sheet. And so I really traditionally always use, should use a cover sheet to protect your transfer from the heating element. Now, when you absolutely 100% need them is when you have an ink or a vinyl transfer or something exposed that could stick to the top of the heater. So if I'm doing sublimation and I have a sublimation blank, I'm always careful to cover that up. Careful to cover up. Um, a transfer if I'm doing a two-color CAD cut and I've got some vinyl exposed. When you don't ever want to use a cover sheet, I guess I should stop back. Not all the time. I never use cover sheets with screen printed transfers uh, from Transfer Express, mainly because they have dialed them in without them, and so they're guaranteed that application without them. And you don't really need them because you have that paper covering it anyways, which works as a cover sheet essentially. Okay, great. So just to recap. The trick to decorating all of these soft, stretchy, synthetic fabrics is to use a transfer that applies at a lower temperature, a lower dwell time, and a lower pressure. Be careful not to over-apply pressure when you're making adjustments for pillows and pads and different platens, especially smaller sizes like a 6x10 or a small print perfect pad. Those will help to set you up for success when you're printing um, for 90 to 95 percent of the performance for a job that you're going to be printing in shop. So, I appreciate everybody coming on, joining us for the live class. We have a couple more live classes this week. You can see it at stallstv.com if you go under the event section. And then also we encourage you guys to join into our forum. As always, ask questions, um, engage with myself, other Stalls TV educators, and even other viewers just like you that are right here on this live class. Thanks for attending.